Hi everyone, this is Pedrick from P2 Design. In this video, we are going to learn about animation principles and other definitions and how they apply in Blender and beyond. There is a lot in this video, so feel free to ask in the comments below for specific tutorials. Let's get started. First principle or word we should learn about is animation. Animation is the state of being full of life or vigor. It's not about moving things, it's about making them feel alive. That's why we may separate motion design and animation. It doesn't mean that motion design can't feel lively. COG or COG is the center of gravity of your character or props. Considered as the main pivot point and controller, it often refers to the torso root, positioned closed to the hips. This is the controller you may always polish first and give extra attention to, as it generally leads all the other body features. Your timeline is divided in frames. A keyframe is the digital drawing of your character. This definition may differ a bit, but we may consider it's a single image from an animated sequence. In Blender, it stores the transformation value of your character controllers on a given frame. You can insert a keyframe pressing I or using the auto king option in the timeline. In the dope sheet and action editor, you can change the keyframe type using the R key. It's just a landmark and won't affect the animation or key's behavior. You can learn everything you need about king set in my previous video. Animation blocking or blocking stage is the process of creating the main poses of your character's animation, also known as key poses. During this stage, we generally use stepped interpolation or constant interpolation accessible with the T shortcut in your animation editors to prevent the computer from interpolating between poses. Otherwise, the animation may look floaty or messy. Key poses or golden poses are important drawings or poses that define your animation. If we take the example of a throw, that will be the idle pose, the starting pose, then the anticipation, the current throw, and eventually the overshoot or settle. With these initial poses, we clearly understand the meaning of this animation. Breakdowns are additional poses that are generally created during the detail blocking or blocking plus stage, and better show how to get from key pose A to key pose B. You can use the breakdowner tool pressing Shift E to help you figure out the base pose of your breakdowns and then refine them by hand. In-betweens are all the poses in between the key poses and breakdowns. In 3D animation, we generally polish these poses using the graph editor. In traditional or 2D animation, it's often the job of in-betweeners, generally junior animators, that create these additional drawings based on the timing, spacing, and key poses provided by the lead animator. Check this video from Aaron Blaze, one of the masters of 2D animation. Here's the difference between timing and spacing. Timing is the way. On the bouncing ball example here, the ball hits the wall on frame 10, the ground on frame 22, then it reaches its highest point on frame 26, and contact the next wall on frame 30. This is the timing, while spacing is the distance or space drawn by a given point between two frames. It communicates the speed and can be displayed using the motion path in Blender. Arcs are drawn by the motion path of any moving object or feature of your character. It's very unlikely a body feature of any living creature will move along a perfect straight line. Clean and smooth arcs are often the key to a great animation and can be displayed using the Calculate Motion Path operation. You can find this option under the Object Properties and the Armature Properties whenever you are working with an armature. I truly advise you to add the Calculate, Update All Paths and Clear Motion Path button to your quick favorite by right-clicking on them. This way, you will be able to perform this operation directly in the 3D viewport pressing the Q key. You can calculate the motion path in the desired animation range. It will generate a motion path per selected pose. 
instead of having to calculate them one by one. And then in the motion path option under display, you can change their color or even change the thickness of the motion path. If you don't want to display the whole motion path, you can switch to the round frame option in the path type. Just experiment with the different values. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top-rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code p2design to get 10% off on any of the courses. Spline and polishing are often mistakenly mixed up while they are two very different concepts. Splining is just the process of changing your interpolation mode from stepped or constant to spline or busy. And you start editing the curves to improve your animation. But we can also consider it's polishing the animation as you're trying to improve it. You can polish your blocking too. So polishing is not, by definition, related to the interpolation mode. It's just the extra work you put on your animation or artwork to make it looks better. Polishing is very subjective. You can switch to spline, selecting all your keys in any animation editor and press T. You may switch to spline when your blocking shows everything you need not to leave any possible interpretation to your animation. All key poses, anticipation, overshoot, extremes, contact poses and breakdown are clearly defined and you already have a solid timing. You should be able to feel, read the arcs of your animation before switching to spline. Squash and stretch are deformation applied to a character or object to create a sense of weight and elasticity. It often refers to the bouncing ball mimicking weight on impact and faked motion blur during the stretching. It's one of the most important principles that applies to everything, whether it's your whole character silhouette or one feature deformation. You may use object scale to fake it or hope for your rig to have specific controllers. Smears and multiples fake the motion blur that you would have on a real movie or also in your real life perception when watching a fast moving object. You can create smear, deforming and stretching your character along his motion path, or use shape keys. Check this video for a detailed tutorial on how to create smears. Create multiple, simply duplicate your character mesh, and keep what you need and animate the mesh visibility. You can use this method in game engine using particle system to spawn the multiples. Mixing smears and multiples is also welcome. Anticipation and micro-anticipation give the viewer an idea of what's about to happen and allows the character to gather energy for the next move. He reads the anticipation on the throw or on an attack. If we remove the anticipation, the animation doesn't read well and feels less believable. In this specific attack animation, the anticipation is this pose. And I'm adding a micro-anticipation of one or two frames on top of it to improve the impact of the animation. Basically taking the anticipation pose and pushing it a lot. The micro anticipation is just a very short anticipation. And it's super useful when you have a very short timing to perform an action and keep it readable. Especially in gameplay animation. I've built the previous anticipation using an extreme pose. Extreme poses refers to the drawings or poses where your character reaches an extreme. It can be the highest point of a jump, the most pushed anticipation pose, an overstretch punching pose. It's often built from a pushed key pose or golden pose. Staging is a very broad concept that basically defines everything in bold to clearly communicate the ID in a shot. You may use composition, affixes, anticipation, etc. to guide your audience's eyes and thoughts. For example, we could consider these dust impacts affixes as staging features as they capture the attention of the viewer toward the robot 
before the rocket hits. Absolutely everything in your animation, sound included, has to be thought as part of the staging. Straight ahead and pose to pose are two different methods of animation. The first one is when you draw or animate your character frame by frame. It can be great when doing lip sync, for example, where you build your poses following along with your audio. Or when you are working on FXs, where it can be complicated to predict what your FX will look like on specific frames or specific timing. Pose to pose is the method I use most of the time where you build your main or key poses as defined before and then slowly add breakdowns and details, offering the best control over your timing and spacing. Follow through and overlapping actions generally refers to a motion offset in your animation. Pretty obvious on hanging features like a ponytail or clothes, but can be applied to any features. You generally need to figure out what leads the animation, like the center of gravity for example, and add a bit of dragging to the features attached to it. You can make an arm dragging on a fast throwing animation for example, or the different gears on this robot. Overlapping and follow through animation give a good sense of physicality. Learn more about it in this dedicated video. Slow in and slow out, or easing in and easing out, refer to acceleration and deceleration, and can be easily identified using the motion path and the graph editor. A linear interpolation without any easing will look very robotic, while adding easing will give it more physicality. You'll get this effect for free switching to Bezier in Blender, but you need to use this wisely, as it may not fit every motion. You don't want to slow down or ease out before an impact, for example. As the ball falls, it's perpetually accelerating till it hits the ground. As the character throws a punch, the punch is accelerating before impact. It will show in your graph editor this way. As a curve is getting horizontal, the spacing is getting smaller and the ball is slowing down. You ease in when you are accelerating and you ease out when you are decelerating. Tuning refers to having symmetry in your animation, whether pose-wise or timing-wise. It is often to be avoided as it may not look natural. In a landing, for example, you may offset feet contact by one or two frames, but tuning or symmetry can be used to show strength, mastery and control. Frame rate is the number of images per second used in animation. Generally 24 frames per second for movies or animated films, as it can be easily divided by 2, 4, 6 or 8 to create clean timing charts or animate on 2s, and 30 frames per second for game animation, as it can easily be upscaled to 60 frames per second by game engine or even more, as it has to fit screen refreshing rate. Animating on ones or twos refer to the number of frames a drawing or pose is held. In 2D or traditional animation, we often animate on twos, making 12 drawings for 24 frames to save drawing labor. It's also the preferred method for stop motion animation. Part of an animation might be drawn on ones, one drawing per frame when we have a very fast motion that needs extra drawing to be clearly read by the audience. An animation is very slow, you can draw on threes, fours, etc. You can easily create a stop motion effect on your character animation using the NLA editor and adding a modifier stepped interpolation. Secondary action is an extra detail you may add to the main motion of your character to emphasize or better communicate the main ID. It can be a facial expression during a movement showing extra aggressiveness or effort from the character. A bored character may tap his fingers on the table while he sides. We often refer to exaggeration in 3D as pushing the pose. You take one action and you push it as far as you can so that it better communicates the ID or the action. For me, this is the most important job of an animator, exaggerating an ID. 
It can be done with broader movement or motion, or exaggerating a reaction. Soccer players will make great animators for sure. Solid drawing. You may consider it out of context, as you don't need to draw when manipulating a digital puppet or character rig, but drawing will improve your observation and analysis skill. And this is the most important skill for any artist. So solid drawing is less important for 3D animators, but it will definitely take your animation skill to the next level. It's also very useful when giving feedback to your peers. Appeal is a very subjective concept. It refers to the fact your character or your animation are interesting to look at. For me, it mostly relies on the staging and the ID. And in the execution, I'm looking for clear silhouette and as much contrast as possible in both shape and rhythm. Again, this is a very personal and a very subjective topic. This wraps up this video. I hope you found it informative and I will see you in the next one.